Okay, I think it's about one o'clock here in the U.S. Uh, time to get started. Uh, I'm Larry Hamilton. Thank you for watching. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Uh, today we're going to do an oil painting, and uh, if you've been watching a little bit, you may have seen uh, a photograph of what we're going to do. It's a it's a uh, New England uh, scene, a fall scene from uh, New Hampshire, actually, and. Uh, the photo credit goes to Charlie Johnson uh, from the uh, Facebook page, uh, Photos for Artists, which I think I've mentioned before that you know I uh, am a member of, and uh, they have hundreds and hundreds of photos out there. So if you're an artist looking for material to paint, uh, interested in something, uh, they have uh, albums full of photographs that are free, royalty free, copyright free, um, that you can paint from. So, <clears throat> excuse me, today we're going to do this. Uh, painting of a fall New Hampshire scene. I'm probably going to put a little more uh, um, orange and fall colors in it than's actually in the photograph, but anyway, that's uh, what we're going to do. And uh, let me just step over to my computer very quickly and I'll show you what I did to the photograph. I didn't do too much to this one, but I'll just go over my uh, normal um, review for you. I'll be right back. Okay, here I am at the computer and uh, I want to uh, <clears throat> show you the uh, original photo that I started with. Um, this is it, a very beautiful, peaceful scene in a, a lake in New Hampshire. Almost no sky, um, a lot of middle ground, uh, quite a few rocks, some water in the foreground that uh, we can play with putting highlights on, and uh, some big rocks in the foreground as well. I did crop it, as I usually do, uh, but it almost shows no difference. Uh, I, I made it fit an 11 by 14 uh, pixel count or 11 by 14 aspect ratio. Um, I think I've talked to you about that before, that you can take a photograph into a photo editor and if you want to crop it to get it to fit one of your standard painting sizes like 11 by 14 or 16 by 20 to figure out what that aspect ratio is, um, you divide the larger number by the smaller number, width and height, and you get a number. It's like 1.27 or 1.28. Um, and then you use that to make the pixel count of the photograph you're trying to crop match that ratio as, as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, if you can make it match uh, 1.27 to 1, um, you'll have an aspect ratio that fits nicely on uh, the canvas you're painting on or pa paper if you're painting on uh, watercolors. Um, so I use that a lot to sort of get it to fit my my painting surface and uh, it also fits nicely on the TV screen when I'm uh, making these videos. So here's a little uh, picture of the, of the grid. Uh, it's a 4 by 5 grid, uh, which basically fits very nicely on an 11 by 14 uh, canvas. And uh, also I do my uh, value map, which I think I've described to you before, is uh, basically three values, uh, light, medium, and dark. And I try to get them in sort of interlocking shapes if I can. Uh, to make it l a little bit like a puzzle to, uh, to kind of help the eye move through the painting from the lights to the mids to the darks. Um, and uh, I have, I think, one video will put actually how I do that with Photoshop. Um, it's not real complicated, but it does take a little bit of time. Um, and then also I have the sketch that you have probably been watching for a few minutes if you've been on before I started. Um, and this sketch will be made available to you um, in the links below this video and also on my website. Actually, I put them on my website and then I put the links uh, on the video when I upload a new version up to uh, YouTube. So um, I think that's all I want to say here at the computer. Um, I can manage these photographs here better at the computer than I can standing at my easel because it's so clunky to try to show you things from the easel. So I use this technique. Mauro, hello from Italy. Welcome. Glad to see you here. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to my easel now, and uh, we'll get going. Okay, I'm back, and uh, let's get going on this painting. Um, I want to show you first my uh, palette, and uh, it hasn't changed from last painting. Um, I have the same set of colors. I have the same set of brushes. Um, I have my three Bob Ross brushes. I have this landscape brush. I have a, a rigger, and I have a fan brush. may not use those too much, but... Uh, I uh, still have that in my inventory of paint of paint brushes. Um, I have a number of Treckle brushes, T R E K E double -L, L. Um there's a 16. These are all filberts here. There's five filberts. 
a 16, 10, 6, 2, and 0. And then I have five flats from Treckle. There's a 16, 12, 8, 4, and 0. So I may not use all those. Um, I don't know how many I will use, but uh, it doesn't matter. I'll uh, use what the painting calls for. And uh, I also have a couple of painting knives. I have the big Bob Ross uh, uh, painting knife that he sells. His number five, I think it's number five painting knife. And I uh, also have another small uh, painting knife here that I may use. Um, but anyway, that's the uh, the brushes and my instruments. Uh, I'll go over the paints very quickly for you. Um, you probably have these memorized by now, but we have here titanium white. These are Bob Ross colors, except for two Grumbacher colors. Titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow and bright red. Those were all Bob Ross paints. I have a Grumbacher uh, cadmium orange here. I thought the orange would help us to get some of the colors in this nice fall scene. And I also have, it's kind of its complement, which is this ultramarine violet. So uh, that's my paints, that's my uh, brushes. And uh, I'm gonna get started on this right now. Um, the thing I just realized is I didn't put out some uh, um, thinner and uh, not thinner, but, uh, well, yeah, I'm medium. Anyway, it's my, uh, if I get the right bottle out here, I haven't pulled out, hold on, and I'll put a little bit of this uh, medium in my, uh, come on here, there we go. Usually I have this stuff all done. I don't have to take time to do it. That's why I like to do it before. Um, this is uh, something called Liquin, L-I-Q-U-I-N, by Windsor Newton, and uh, it's really a medium that, um, helps the painting dry faster um, and uh, it also helps the painting flow very nicely on the, the canvas. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of white. Uh, I'm not going to use any liquid white today, uh, but I will use uh, some uh, just to get a nice background here. I'm going to thin this down a little bit with liquid and uh, just put a little bit in here in some areas where we're going to have some sky. Not much sky going on in this painting. Um, there's a few spots in here that are going to have some uh, uh, holes to peek through the trees. Um, but um, that's, <laughs> that's about the extent of it. Um, I just, uh, just realized I didn't have my uh, proper camera going out to the broadcast and I didn't take the time to zoom in on it. So I'll do that right now. Okay, let's do that and get this thing uh, lined up for you. So I'm going to put it over here a little bit to the side and uh, I want to put my palette on top of it so I'm going to put it down here on the bottom there we go now that's the way I should have had it set up before I started I got so surprised I didn't have my lick one out here that I uh, forgot to do that um, so okay all I really did is basically put in a little bit of area for sky sky holes here uh, with this big uh, filbert 16 filbert um, that may be all I need that liquid for I don't know um, but uh, let's get in here and put a little bit of sky in this thing not too much um, this, these colors that uh, I have these Bob Ross colors are very very strong and very potent all of them are very strong because he always painted with a canvas covered in uh, liquid white for the most part he did a few with liquid black or something but most of the time he had this liquid white and liquid white was really uh, Take, dilute these colors down. So his mixtures of colors that they sold uh, always had, uh, were very, very strong. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to pop a little bit of this in here, a little bit of color in, um, enough to uh, allow me to have some see-through holes when I put the sky over this, or put the uh, trees over these areas. Um, we just want a little bit of this either light color or this uh, blue color to uh, shine through and uh, that's about all I want to do there. Uh, let's see here, I'm going to put just a little more white, some pick up some more white without uh, blue in it and put a few little fluffy clouds up here. Not going to be too many to see but I just want to put a little bit of uh, texture, something in there to kind of make the eye realize there's some 
clouds up here. Very, very light. Very, very small amount of uh, clouds up there. Don't have to do a lot, just uh, just enough to give it some over, uh, over overriding texture a little bit. Um, okay, I think we're good with that. Let me uh, clean this brush out <clears throat> and get going here. All right, these trees, uh, I think I'm gonna paint this typically back to front, which I like to do, um, but the farthest back uh, trees and so forth are back here in this area, and they have a combination of green and some some grays in them so um, you know we can always make a gray we can gray down green question of the day is how do you gray down green well you use a complementary color and red is a complementary color to green so I pull up some red and if you look at my palette here you can actually see that green getting grayer and browner the red pulls the uh, color out and makes it a little, little brownish color. I can also put some brown in it if I want, pick up a little of my uh, dark uh, sienna there and put a little bit of that in it. That will also brown it up a little bit. Uh, but basically over here in this area, um, it's almost too, too green. I think I'll uh, put a little more red in there and get it grayer. Could put a little midnight black in there and gray it down a little bit even uh, with some, some white. See if I can get this color. I'm going to try to take my time today. I'm not in a big rush. I hope you're not in a big rush. Uh, but uh, we'll put in a number of these little trees back in here. Try to cover the sky. Leave some areas for some sky holes. These are trees that have lost a lot of their leaves, and uh, some of them are starting to get some color in them. Uh, so let's just put in something like that. Um, a little bit of my gray. I want to pick up a a little bit of this um, oops. white and uh, midnight black. I'll pick up a little more gray here. Um, start putting in some other values, other colors over here like this. You can start seeing, once I start changing the value a little bit, lightening it up, you can start seeing the uh, a little bit of the texture of these trees that are sort of in front of those ones behind it. Uh, and uh, even put a little of uh, my violet in there, pick up a little of this violet. Um, haven't really washed my brush out. I've wiped some of the paint out of it, but I haven't washed it. Um, with uh, thinner, so it's still uh, still getting these nice mixtures of uh, previous colors on here, and uh, I'm able to uh, get a nice set of fine branches as I'm as I'm pushing up. I'm letting these bristles on here be the hundred little paint brushes that sort of push this tree out and uh, using the uh, little bit of the this ultraviolet helps me change the color a little bit and helps me uh, distinguish it from the background from the trees behind it um, so we're just kind of painting from back to front right to left right now So these are, uh, they're looking violet, which is okay. Uh, some of them have lost their, all their leaves, and so they're just uh, basically little uh, branches. And uh, so I'm just trying to create that color that's got a little bit of a uh, mixture of colors in it, a little bit of brown, a little bit of violet. 
lightening it up a little bit here and there. So I'm not big, making big brush strokes. I'm not even making the old Bob Ross X stroke, as he called it, uh, which he used to put on a lot. Um, I'm just using the back of this brush and letting the bristles make their own, own trees, make their own uh, uh, texture. And by changing the color slightly, a little bit of dark, a little bit of light, and uh, we can, we can actually show depth. So if I put something a little darker on top of this, a bit more of my violet, say, um, I will start showing you. It has to be a little darker than that. Come on here, a little darker. We'll start showing you. I have to make it really darker than it is on the uh, photograph I'm looking at because the uh, camera kind of dilutes it down a little bit and uh, distorts the values a little bit. Um, camera will usually do that. You have to be careful using digital cameras because they definitely change the values on you. Color is not too bad. Usually you get the colors close, but they also uh, distort them because they try to average out values across their, their um, image. Uh, silicone image capture chip that's in all these all these digital cameras. Uh, I'm going to put a few of these up here to sort of change this color a little bit. Uh, add a few more light things up there. Okay, so I'm getting some nice looking things. I've got some really darks back in here I'm going to put in next after a bit. Uh, but I've got a lot of uh, other colors to, uh, to work with here. Um, I'm going to clean this brush out now with some uh, thinner and uh, let it uh, rest for a few minutes while I use another brush. Uh, I'm going to start putting in a few of these uh, trees in the back behind here. Um, they have more <coughs> yellow, more yellow and orange in them. I'm going to use ochre for some of that and my Indian yellow uh, to pick up uh, some of those colors. Um, and I'll even to gray it down I'm going to pick a little bit more of this violet up. <coughs> So uh, let me see if I can get some colors in here that kind of represent what was in the photograph a little bit. I want them to be light and I want them to be f just really uh, kind of fuzzy on the edges out there. I don't know if you can see that that well, but I'm trying to make, trying to make an abstract shape. I don't want this to be angular. I don't want it to be rectangular. I want it to be abstract. So I'm making a sort of a floating type if you were to draw a line over this, it goes like this and dips and it comes down here. These sizes are a little bit, they're, they're different sizes, different widths, different heights. Um, you have to think about abstract shapes in everything you do um, because that's what makes paintings beautiful. That's what makes people attracted to your paintings. Um, so a bit of green in there, throwing a little more green. I'm just touching in some sap green in here on top of what's already there. Um, but you can see the change, the subtle, subtle changes by just pushing this in and uh, making a lot of trees back there. Hello, Louisa from South Africa. Welcome. Glad you could make it today. Um, if you have any questions, folks, you have the chat window there and uh, Please feel free to ask. I'll try to uh, keep an eye on my uh, computer up here by my easel and uh, see if I can uh, answer your questions as you may type them in. I'm putting in a few dark sienna uh, trees here. This is a heavy wooded area back here, very, very heavy. It's got some nice colors in it. It has some nice uh, changes of value. So that's really all I'm trying to do here is get some, make it look like a very, very, very uh, heavy and dark wooded area. Pick up some of my, that, my uh, violets here. 
Violet makes a good color to kind of counterbalance white or greens with. Uh, oranges, of course, yellows. Uh, so I kind of use this yellow or this violet color a lot to give me a contrasting uh, value. Okay, over here, this is all going to be nice orange, bright orange trees. So I'm going to put a little background color in here that I can paint over. Uh, I'm just kind of working my way down the mountain over there back behind all of this, putting in a mixture of colors that browns and um, violets. There, there. Okay. So I've got some nice changes of color, changes of value. Um, just a little bit down here in these areas. I want to remember where my trees go. I've got a number of trees that kind of stick up here that are going to be reflected down in the water. So I want to make sure that I don't forget those and don't uh, lose track of them where they are. So as I paint my way down this canvas here, I want to make sure I preserve some of that. So I'm just painting sort of the tops of a lot of trees here and uh, I'm going to put some really dark darks in here to help uh, define it a little bit. There's actually a road back there. I'm not going to make a road out of it, but uh, I'm going to uh, put a base underneath it that I can paint over very easily. Okay, so that blue is really sticking out up there. I'm going to just slightly cover it a, a little bit. I don't like it that bright. That's why I said that blue color um, just uh, is, is very potent. Hello, David from Oxford, UK. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Okay, so that's pretty much what I want to do there. Put a few more base colors in here. Just sort of clean my brush out a little bit. Have something besides just clear canvas here because I'm going to paint over all of that. Uh, okay. Um, Clean this brush out a little bit. All right. Um, I want to put those darks in yet or not? Uh, I've got some really dark dark in there that uh, the actual the camera made it almost black. And this is one of the, the failures of a of, of uh, digital cameras. Um, they give you some really really dark darks and. Uh, I've got a little bit of dark in here in some places. Probably not going to make it as dark as it shows on the camera because the camera does turn things black um, when you don't want them to be black. Um, so I'm going to put in some areas that are kind of dark here. And uh, we'll come back and paint some uh, lighter colors over that. I'm not trying to not make it as dark as it shows in the photograph. Uh, photographs are very, very, very dark. And we got areas that are sort of dark back in this area as well. I have tree branches over, and I'll come back and put some tree branches over this to uh, make that dark stand out a little bit. Um, Really, see it goes down. There's a that's all bright. This is all this is where all the dark is back in here. So I'm using black and Van Dyke brown here together, and throwing a little, little bit of my violet in there to give me some color change. So it's not all same color. Um, but this is all fairly dark all the way down to this road back here.
darks in here. Darks are spread all over this thing, really. So I'm not making that quite as dark as uh, I could. Pretty well wiped out my little uh, sky hole there, but you can still see it. Um, okay, over this way, we've got a few more darks in this area. So just pop them in and we'll come back and paint over them and we'll help make that. It won't look quite as splotchy or as ugly as it might be looking right now to you. Uh, paintings all go through an ugly phase and uh, I may have reached an ugly phase already here with this one. All right, um, let's hold off on that now for a little bit and see if we can put in a few. Um, let me get in some a uh, little bit lighter paint here. I'm going to put in some of these uh, tree trunks that are uh, kind of coming up in the. Uh, see if I can show them to you here. Let's see, they're sort of coming up from this area here. There's like that is not really dark enough, is it? So I'm going to go back and get some darker material here. Still not dark enough. I'm going to have to add some. Darkest dark you can get usually is uh, the blacks that you buy. Typically, even this black from uh, Bob Ross is sort of turns violet on you when you light when you add paint to it. But you can use uh, alizarin and uh, your green, a dark green and blue, and you'll get a really dark, dark, dark. There's that tree trunk. There we got one. Another one here. And thin ones over here. Um, they go up into space back here. So I'm just putting in some that maybe are probably not even in the uh, photograph necessarily. I'm just sort of filling this space in over here with some things that make it look like there's a lot of trees and branches and things going on. Um, I'm going to get my uh, my rigger. <clears throat> this rigger has nice thin bristles on it, <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to lighten it up. I'm going to put a little bit of this lighter, uh, some white. Uh, maybe even pick up a little of my liquid and get a nice thin layer of light gray here um, and start putting in a few these to be lighter than that whiter than that I should say so I'm getting a thin thin mixture and uh, let's see if I can put in a few I don't know if you can see it that well or not um, but these are sort of a lot of branches back here that are just sort of they've lost all their leaves um, and um, so by taking this light color and putting it on say one side of the this trunk you can sort of give yourself a nice little highlight and just pull it up into uh, like that okay that's starting to look kind of what I want to get out of this. Uh, maybe there's a couple over here that have a little lighter edge on them. So I'm just sort of mixing the uh, colors with what's on the, on, the, on the canvas already and just giving ourselves some nice cute little tree branches sitting back there in the distance. They're not that far back actually, they're kind of in the middle ground, but uh, let's put in a lot of these. Get uh, If you have the thinner, uh, thinner paint, it will go over a thicker paint. So, uh, sort of put these in, make them in an X fashion. You want to think about when you paint tree branches, think about painting them like your hand. If you laid your hand up there, make those branches go um, as your hand goes almost. Um, actually, a better way to think about it might be even to think about them as a, uh, as a clock. Uh, if you started up here at 12 and went to 1, 2, you want them to sort of 
fan out like they were in a in a clock pattern. Um, so that's what helps uh, help them to look kind of real because they, they do have that way of growing generally. Um, okay, a couple more over here, and I'm going to stop on this. I don't want to get too busy. Don't want it to look too uh, too crazy back there. All right, stop for now. Oh, Adam, hello, thank you. Your comment is your trees all change so the better when you got a proper rigger. Yeah, the rigger really makes a lot of difference uh, because it's got these long bristles and if you get enough thin paint, um, it really makes a, a big difference in your builder. You saw when I was using this, this flat zero how wide and fat my trunks were. Now, you may want trunks that fat and wide, but um, you, uh, you can't get these nice thin uh, branches like we were getting here. Um, very well with a fat, no, even a zero uh, brush. So uh, let's let it stand at that. And I'll see if I need to come back to that later. But right now I'm going to hold off and uh, and move on to something else. Okay, so let's look now. Where are we? Got that pretty well finished off. Um, there's some it starts turning lighter here. Got a little green coming in, um, coming down to these rocks. These rocks here. I want to make sure I preserve those. That's why I like to have a sketch on here because it r reminds me there's rocks right here um, and I don't want to uh, paint over those and lose that. Um, I am going to put in some green, there's some green grass and some uh, stuff here that's it's got to have a little more ochre in it than that. Um, I'm using um, sap green and ochre and some bright cad yellow sort of get this color, see if that's the color I want. Yeah, that's pretty close to what's in the photograph. Um, these are just, uh, I don't know, like uh, grasses that have grown up and uh, they're just sort of lining the road actually. Um, so I'm, as I push down and pull my brush up, I'm actually painting over some of my trees, which is fine. Uh, make sure I preserve that rock area there. Uh, but um, I want to try to keep it somewhat muted. I don't want it to be uh, really bright. When you put this cad yellow in, it starts getting pretty bright and you have to sort of uh, tone it down with ochre or some other color. Okay, so just very loose paint back here, pulling up and letting it, pulling up and Pulling the brush away is what I'm doing here. Um, so it gives that top of those that look like they're just a bunch of weeds growing back there, which is what they are. <clears throat> See, this is all, there's a little bit of that over here going on, this area, over the top of these rocks. So I'll go ahead and put that in while I got my brush going. And there's a bunch more of it going on over this area, but I'm going to stop on that, I think, for right now and just leave it set that way. Um, there is some darker underpainting there that uh, shows some shadows here. Um, put some brown in the tip of my brush and uh, just sort of pulling it down this way. Um, what's that doing? It's giving me another layer because I have darks on top of lights and lights on behind darks. Um, I'm going to get down here to get into some of the, uh, this is more brush down in this area. So uh, you can just see contour of the land by just putting in these little dark, um, using the top of the brush to uh, just push in some things to help highlight it. Those might be rocks that are covered up with uh, grasses. Um, gray, gray rocks in here, a few darks over here, not many. You get around this rock. So it's, it's helping me do three-dimensional. It's help, helping it look three-dimensional, I should say. Um, if you can get three, two to three values in your, um, your objects, whatever they are, whether it's a rock or grass or trees or whatever, if you can get three values in, you start making it look three-dimensional. And that's what that's all we're trying to do. We're fooling the eye into thinking this is a three-dimensional space out here when 
everybody knows it's not. Um, okay, uh, what else can I do there? I see a nice, looks like it's not a log, maybe a broken off tree that's kind of sitting here. I want to kind of capture above this rock right here. I think I had it started there, but I think I painted over it. Um, I'm using this zero brush. There's a it's just sort of like a broken tree trunk sitting there. So I just make it touch the bottom of this rock and uh, let it go with that. Put a few other echoes of that color here so we don't have uh, Okay, um, I'm going to leave it like that. I really had almost two tone in my brush when I pushed it and went down and came up. It left that kind of a rough looking surface. You can almost see that that's a tree a tree trunk that's been broken off. Some of it's about brush control, some of it's about color. Uh, okay, so here we got a lot of yellow, followed by a lot of orange, some more tree trunks. So this yellow is a, uh, <clears throat> this, I'm going to see if I can use this same brush here, I think. Um, I'm going to mix a little more uh, cad yellow in with my yellow ochre, see if I can brighten it up, get a couple of colors on my brush, and uh, I'm going to put these all in behind here, behind this tree. Um, needs to have a little bit more ochre in it. Um, now I'm tapping. Put it on. Bit of this. Pick up a little bit of my darker color to get another value. The darker values will help give you. Uh, some three-dimensionality here. Well, oh, that looks a little bit, a little bit too, uh, too yellow. Let's see if I can change it by adding some ochre and white in here. Some areas. There we go. Needs a little bit of white on top of it to give it some highlights. So I'm trying to get three values again. A mid value, which is what I put on first, followed by a few shadows, followed by some light highlights. That's almost too much highlight. It's way too bright. When you look at that, it just pulls your eye right there. So we don't want that. We want to soften that up a little bit by just putting in some light brush strokes over it. Pull it out there like that. Um, still just a little bit too light, but I think I may leave it for now. And when I do my assessment in a little bit, I'll step back, look at it, and see if I uh, need to tone it down a little bit. Um, so I'm just moving my way across this canvas. Um, that does not look like much of an abstract shape to me. It looks sort of uh, sort of rounded off, a little bit like a pie shape to some extent, which I prefer not to have. So let's see if I can fix that a little bit by just adding a few more touches here and there, pulling it in, pulling it back. Not quite as obvious, but let's pull over here a little bit more of this. Continue this way. And I see, uh, as I go across there, I see some greens floating through. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this sap green on my brush and see if I can pull in just a little bit of that in some areas. Pull it back in like this. Use that as sort of the uh, third value in here. All right, 
that's that's not too bad. All right, now let's see if we can get a trunk. I've got another trunk that goes right up through the middle of this tree and goes up into that area. So I'm going to get my uh, rigger out here and uh, give me some thinner to work with and uh, get me a nice kind of a dark brownish color. Brownish color with a little gray in it maybe. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to push down and then pull up. So if I push down it should give me a fat. Use this rigger for not a rigger but as a uh, wide brush and then just pull, pull up like that. You can't even see it can you? <laughs> I can see it, but I can't see it when I turn around and look at the camera. I have a monitor here beside me, and I can turn around and look at that to see if it's uh, doing what I want and uh, looking the way I want it to look on, on the uh, finished video. And uh, needs some more darker on this left side, so I'm going to come back again and put another dark. Pull it up. It goes up into here like that. Um, has another branch or two sticking off of it here like this. Um, my dark. Probably got, there's a little better, I think. Maybe, yeah, that's looking a little better. Um, so this goes up into here, and then we start getting some of those orange. Uh, orange looking things going on. Um, I got this uh, other brush with my yellows and I'm going to paint behind it. There's another tree right in here that I'm going to put in while I still can remember it. and don't want to forget it. Um, and I'm going to paint right around it right now. There's a lot of dark rock and stuff down in here. Uh, let's put this all in right in here. It has these yellow colors. It has some, uh, picks up some uh, other value change in there in some areas. Okay, now I'm going to come back and use my rigger again and uh, get some more of this color. I'm going to put a little more uh, violet in this one, I think. See what that does. I'm going to change the color up. I don't want all these trunks to look the same, look the same color, even though in the photograph they might be identical. Uh, I don't want them to look identical. I'm sort of squiggling this in now with a jiggly hand. People say, I can't draw a straight line. Well, I don't want you to draw a straight line. I want you to draw a jiggly line, especially when you're painting something like a tree trunk or a tree branch. Uh, the more you can uh, Give it some movement. See, I didn't draw that perpendicular either. I, I changed it so it wasn't quite uh, perpendicular to the one over here. Uh, I made that one. These two are perpendicular, uh, which I might want to change that a little bit, but uh, I'll leave that for a little bit later. Um, some other things going on in here that give us some more texture in these trees. Um, Something like that. So I'm just building this thing toward us. I'm just kind of coming from the back to the front. And uh, I'm going to build it up to this big rock in the front and uh, see if that's how that works. E Ehor, wow, welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here. Are you from Russia? I don't know. I can't tell from the names necessarily where people are from. It doesn't make any difference anyway. Just like to know who we have joining our group here. Glad to see all of you here. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of this lighter color on the side of this. It's almost too light, but let's put it down just a little. Make it look a little different. In the top of it, be really jagged or rugged. All 
All right, stop. I'm getting too much, putting in too much detail now. Um, but I want these things to sort of have some trunks and tree branches and all that sort of stuff going on up in here. I'm just gonna put in a few more things and I can pal paint over most of these, but uh, if I have them in there, I can at least uh, highlight a few. Hello, Heather, you're welcome from Mississippi. Got a real global audience here today, folks. Um, okay, so I think it's time to start pulling out my oranges here. Um, I'm gonna get a flat brush. I think I'm gonna get this, I think about this size. This is my number eight flat. Um, I'm gonna pick up this orange, put a little white over here, see if I can get a couple of two, three tones of orange. Um, can add some yellow to it if I want. Um, and I can come back again. This is a good one to use my uh, violet with to uh, give me a dark value. So I can get, here I can get several shades, some nice uh, shadow colors with this uh, violet color and then the orange and uh, some titanium white here in the middle and for like a highlight color and then I'll just use the orange um, as it is almost for my main color. So let's see what happens here. I'm gonna again get this brush loaded with paint on both sides and we're gonna start in here. I still have the white on there nicely. That's really uh, getting paint on my hands. Let's try this again here. Let's get, I'm gonna add just a little red to that. See if I can change that color of orange just slightly to make it a little more reddish color. See if I can get a little closer to it. Um, This is a lot of big, a lot of uh, orange going on here. I, since I painted, underpainted that already, I have some some dark underpainting for it. Um, so that whenever I leave a little gap <clears throat> or miss an area, uh, that's what shows through. It's either the gray canvas or it's the uh, that underpainting of uh, violet that I put on there. Okay, I like that it's too bright. I really like having this uh, camera set up and this monitor behind me because I can look back and see what it looks like on camera and I can tell whether or not it's the kind of um, shape I want, the kind of color, kind of value. Uh, so I'm uh, trying to get these built in, have them come out and just sort of Go over the clouds a little bit. Um, it's a quite a different color than the colors over here. It's really a different, uh, whole different set of uh, tones that we're working with. Um, so I'm going to have to balance it. I'll be able to balance some of it with the uh, reflections, maybe, and uh, I may just put some orange over here just to force it to balance. As a matter of fact, while I'm thinking about it, I may put that balance in right now. Just put a few of those colors right in this area over there. It's not quite as bright as what I'm putting on the canvas up here, but um, I was trying to get a good mixture of oranges and throw some yellows in there. This thing comes down, way down. Let's see, it comes down, all the way down into here. <clears throat> So it's a big area of, of it's a huge trees, trees, actually sets of trees that go in here and uh, come all the way down to uh, this area. They actually come down here and then they start turning more yellow as they get over this way. So I'm going to put some underpainting of, of this color in here. Um, you can see how that gray canvas uh, 
I didn't. I don't think I told you we're painting on 11 by 14 canvas today, which is my standard size, um, and it also has a gray gesso on it. That's a mid-tone gray and uh, mid-value gray, not tone, mid-value. And uh, so I'm just trying to uh, paint in some uh, nice tree shapes here. Again, I haven't. I don't think I've used this brush. I don't think I've used it like this at all yet today. I'm, I'm just painting with the back of it, little pushing up strokes. Um, so I'm painting around this uh, sky hole here. I guess you want to call it. Original painting didn't have these sky holes in it. Uh, original photo, I should say. Um, sort of using my artistic license here and uh, adding some areas here that make it look like it's uh, have a little more interest than just all this uh, orange color here. Uh, Change this color a little bit from the orange, start getting into a little more yellows. So I'll be picking up my combination of ochres and cad yellow um, as I move over this way. Okay, it's looking halfway decent. Spending a lot of time painting these trees here. We've been going for not quite an hour, about 50 minutes or so. Um, but I am trying to take enough time to uh, make this a nice completed painting. Let's see, this is a more yellowish, yellow and yellow green down here. So I'm going to put in this underpainting of yellow down here, this color. And I'll come back and do some green over the top of it. And we got some fence posts or something. It might even be more tree trunks over here. I don't know. Got a bunch of trees floating in here. All right, we're making good progress here. interesting to turn around and look at my TV monitor and see what it looks like to you from compare it to what it looks like to me. These digital cameras do a wonderful job but they also uh, distort things a little bit. Um, beware of that especially when you're taking photos or painting from a photo which is what I do a lot of. Paint from a lot of photos. So I have to constantly check myself and make sure I'm not getting deceived by the camera. Very easy to get deceived by the camera. Make these a little smaller here. There we go. I don't want those to be, when I start out, they're all about the same size. I don't want them to be the same size. I don't want them to be the same shape. Um, so I'm going to put some either branches through there or uh, change the shape or something. So let's just keep moving on down here. We've got trees to put in. I'm going to stop, step back, take a little look, see how we're doing. Mm -hmm. Looking pretty decent, I think. That blue really uh, stands out, doesn't it? Let's go 
back and get a little more orange now and see if we can get some more of this orange color in here in some areas. Sort of making it go the way these trees, these trees are all kind of hanging over this water in some areas and so I'm sort of trying to mimic that thing. Um, Put in a few scrub brush marks here and just fill this in. Leave room for these trees. I don't want to forget where they are. So I'll leave a little bit of my little openings there. Okay. I actually have some more green over here in this area. I'm going to have to come back and put that, put some green over that. Okay, let's see up here. Put in some, just touch in some of uh, this orange color. Leaving a little more paint on the canvas. You probably you can't see the thickness of the paint, but I am leaving more paint on the canvas here uh, than I did in some of those other areas. Um, I want to uh, sort of this uh, little stippling effect, if you would. Just changing up my uh, sky hole patterns here a little bit so they don't look so big and so perfect. All right, so that's uh, enough of that for a while. Let's change our uh, plan here and go to uh, a little bit more of our, some more of our uh, trees. I think I'm going to stick with this rigger. I really like the way it uh, working so far. Um, this black doesn't really get black. I'm going to add some alizarin to it. That'll darken it down. If I want it even darker, I'll put a little sap green in there and that'll get it even darker. The darkest color you can really make without using black is usually alizarin crimson and um, Viridian green. Um, so, um, A number of tree branches laying in here like this. Got some down here. Like that. I should have painted the uh, background color behind there before I put that in, but I didn't. So let's uh, see if we can put a few more things in like that. Um, could use our knife and even scrape out a few. It's not going to work too well because I don't have a dark enough color on top. Um, over here that would work. You could put in uh, some nice little scrapes like that um, with uh, the back of the palette knife. You have a gray uh, canvas in back so you can uh, actually show some light uh, tree, tree branches over there. Um, it's a favorite uh, trick, as I recall, from Bob Ross. Uh, all right, let's see here how we're doing on these trees over here. I think I'm going to put another little 
section up here, maybe a section or two here that kind of go up into the trees like that and shows you that these trees are uh, continuing on, covering up some of the some of these branches or some of these trunks. Um, then I'll come back and pick up a color like a, a orange or a, a yellow, sort of lay it right in over the top of some of these so they look like they're really embedded in the uh, painting instead of uh, uh, just glued on. They, that's the danger when you do this. Looks like that looks like it's glued on right there. So I don't like that. So I'm going to come below it and put in some. Um, whoops! I got some nice dark brown on my brush, which I didn't like, but we will use it. Okay. So I just sort of blended that all together by just using the wet on wet technique and. Uh, Putting in some heavier paint now back here. Up here, we're going to blend that away. So it looks like they're just sort of in, embedded in the, uh, the wood. You don't have to uh, make them all look like they're glued on. Um, down here, there's a lot more green, I guess. I'm going to use my sap green and some of my yellow, cad yellow. You um, can put a little dab of white in there to sort of lighten it up a little bit. See if I can get that lighter color, I don't know. Don't know whether that'll work or not. Let's see here. Yeah, there's some. I'm gonna throw some of that green in and, in and around this area because it is these down here. I'm right above the rocks. I've got a bunch of rocks to do down here, so I better get moving. Um, put in between these. Should have put this in before I put the tree trunks in, but I didn't, so I'll just paint around them and make you think I did it right. Maybe I'll make you think that. Put a few of the greens up here. We got more of that green going down this side over here. So we're getting some nice uh, light colors here that are uh, actually uh, probably too bright for this time of the season. I don't know, but sometimes the green grass hangs on. Especially in areas where they're not getting uh, enough, uh, haven't died off enough yet. Um, combinations of ochres and uh, yellows and sort of thing. Got some rocks here I've got to put in. Okay, so we'll just kind of mix that up, make it uh, look like it all belongs there. All right, down here we got some more oranges coming in. More trees coming in over here. A lot of, lot of tree vegetation here going on, folks. Okay. All right. I think that's maybe enough. I'm going to just see if I can put in a few little white branches here. I don't know if you can even see them. They may be too light. That brush over there. A ton of a little something going through up here like this. Yeah, I could spend a long time doing this, and I probably might do a little bit after the painting's over. I don't want to continue to bore you with this, but I want to uh, show you how you can just make these things look like uh, tons and tons of trees and branches, and as long as you. Don't leave a sharp edge at the bottom. As long as you sort of blend it in with uh, your uh, foliage below or around, um, you will uh, make it look like it's part of the landscape and it's not added on. These two things are sort of a mirror of each other. They are that way in the in the photograph, but I'm not going to leave them that way. I'm going to make them one little taller than the other. Um, Maybe even make this a little fatter, I don't know. So they're not, 
identical twins. Put in a few more uh, things like that and just this could be going on up into the trees back here somewhere. So I've lost the uh, lost an edge, found an edge, uh, blended it in. Okay, um, it's good enough for that. I think I'm getting almost all the foliage in that I want to get in. I may come back and put a little bit more on in after a bit, but uh, I want to start getting on these rocks now. We've got a lot of rocks out here. We've got this nice water we've got to work on. Um, so let's uh, see. Daisy Snow from Pakistan. Oh. Ask, why are you using gray canvas instead of white? Okay, well, um, it's all about values. And if you get values right in your painting, you usually have a good value, good, have, a, have a good painting. Um, so I use, I don't know if you can see over here, this is kind of beat up, but this is sort of a value chart from one up to 11 black from two, three, four, five. So my canvas is about a five or a six, if you can tell the, the value of it here. Um, you might be able to see that. Um, this chart over here, um, it's been ripped off and messed up. I need to replace it, but I have it this color so that if I'm looking for a value that's darker than mid value, it's going to be darker than my canvas. If it's lighter than mid value, it's going to be lighter than my canvas. So having the canvas a, a uh, gray gesso, mid, mid value gray gesso, helps me adjust my values. So if I know that I want these rocks to be the same color as my canvas or same value, then they'll paint that gray about the same color as my canvas. If it has to be darker, I'll be, make sure that I make it darker here. So um, it just helps the value um, creation process right. And uh, it's, uh, I've been using it that way for quite a while um, and uh, seems to really work for me. Um, sometimes I paint on white canvas, but most of the time it's uh, uh, this gray gesso and it's all about trying to create the right value. And uh, so with that said, let's see if we can start working on some of these rocks now. I don't know if I'm going to get how big these things are. They're kind of small in this photograph because they're... Uh, so I'm going to see if I can uh, try a few of these with uh, my, uh, my blue, add my blue and my... Uh, Van Dyke Brown, maybe a little bit of white. Um, the blue and the brown will give me a gray. I also have gray in my... Uh, I can make gray with my uh, Midnight Black. It's got put just a little bit of blue there and I got a way too much blue for my uh, color of my rock here. Um, I took all my palette off of the... So let's see, we're gonna, where are we going to start? Back in here is sort of the darkest area um, under this tree right here. Got some really dark rocks back in here. So this, this is a mixture of Prussian blue and uh, Van Dyke brown and um, I'm going to put a little alizarin in there and see if I can get it even a little darker. Change, I want to change the color a little bit so it's not all the same color. Um, there's water back in here a little bit, so I want to make sure I preserve that. Um, and uh, there's a big rock running right along here. See if I can change the color a little bit to a, maybe a brownish, more brown in it. Um, see, these are all really a lot lighter than I'm showing right now. I'm painting in my darks, so I'm going to come back and use my highlights to carve out the, the rocks. So I'm just putting a underpainting here of this dark color. And anywhere I want to highlight a rock, I'm going to use my uh, a lighter color over it and uh, see if that works. Um, see if I can get a little bit of a gray color here with my Van Dyke 
or dark sienna. Okay, I'm starting to get that color, a little bit of that rock color that I want. Um, take a little more time here, but uh, these rocks are fairly rounded because they've been beat up and run over and uh, had a lot of water running over them. Uh, so by double loading my brush, I just had dark on the bottom and light on the top and all of a sudden I've got just really interesting little rocks there that just sort of split out and uh, I like that lighter color. I want to come back and see if I can put it on here. I want the top to have some highlight on it um, and um, combination of browns. I'm using a number four flat brush. Okay. Pick up some more of my white and Vanda and uh, dark sienna and put a little top on here. So you can paint these rocks either way. You can put the highlights on and come back and put the dark underneath them. Uh, but I'm letting a lot of colors mix and mingle on my brush here. So I'm getting some browns. I'm getting some of this uh, uh, bluish gray, steel kind of a steel gray color. Um, and I'm changing the colors. I go back here in the distance. Um, And okay, this is all dark back there. Let's see here. Putting in some purples, putting in some or violets, I guess I'd call it. Um, some blues, changing these colors a little bit around. And when I when it all looks like one big blob like that, you can come back then and take the darkest color that you have. A very dark color. You can get one and come back and sort of then separate them with uh, some shadows like this. All of a sudden you see more rocks. Since they're all rounded it kind of makes a interesting uh, composition because many times these rocks are uh, Angular, usually angular is a, a definite shape for a rock, um, but when they've been pummeled by water for a long time, it uh, they get very rounded. Um, I don't like this color that well over here. I'm going to change it. Okay. What else can I do there? I think that's got a few more um, gray rocks down here. There's a little bit of a gray rock. Connect this together and okay. So far I've been able to, uh, hello Julie Reddy from Halifax, West Yorkshire, UK. Wow, welcome. So fun to see all these folks from all around the world. Okay, let's put a little highlight on that rock there. And maybe a couple highlights back here. All right, 
Um, the rest of this is going to be water. There's a few rocks sitting out in the water, but for the most part that's going to be water with reflections. This rock here has a three-tone uh, rock, actually. Um, I'm going to use my white with a little bit of my violet for the top. I may have to come back and restate this after I put my water in, but um, here's a case, uh, Daisy, where uh, the I want this rock to be lighter than mid-value, so I'm using my canvas <clears throat> as a guide to make sure that you can see that rock. And uh, canvas is, is mid-value, so uh, I want to be able to show you that rock, so I know it has to be lighter than the canvas. And then it gets darker, it gets actually a change of color as it goes down. Picks up a little of this reddish uh, color here um, in these areas and starts changing from that gray to a reddish color. Comes down here like this. Where did my reddish color go? I'm using dark sienna for that. Like that. That's a nice color change, and then it starts getting really dark down at the bottom of this. So let's do that. I'm going to just put this whole rock in and get it done. And it gets a darker gray. It's a much darker gray. If I can get it darker down here as we go down into the water. I really have three tones, but I have three values as well. So the, the brown is sort of the mid. I don't know if this is an area that has, uh, maybe has a tide coming in, where when the tide is in, the uh, water is at a uh, different place on this rock than it is um, when the tide is out. So we're seeing it maybe with the tide out, and we can see this entire rock pretty much. Uh, I'm taking a look here, reading what Heather's got to say. Um, you ever seen the red and blue filters made to look through? Help the identi viewer identify values. Yes, um, I have seen those. I haven't used them. Um, I know they're supposedly, they basically are trying to turn a scene into uh, black and white. And uh, if you can do that, you can really see the values really well. And uh, I usually uh, try to, the other trick that most artists use, well, they'll just try to squint their eyes a little bit. Um, and that seems to help uh, somewhat. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know anybody that's used them. I haven't uh, known an artist that used them. Um, I've tried. Uh, to uh, take a photo, and uh, and on you can't do it really when you're outside. You have to do it when you're back in your computer and you have your photo in a uh, photo man photo uh, <coughs> management software, <coughs> and you can uh, actually take all the color out of it. You basically desaturate it, and uh, like Photoshop will do that. Another um, software. So uh, photo imaging softwares will do that. You take all of the saturation out and it becomes black and white. And then you can actually see and uh, uh, print off, if you want, a, a photographic image that's all black and white. So that's, that's a trick, nice trick to, uh, to learn. Um, and uh, so I do that every once in a while to try to get, the, uh, get a value map. Because I always do my value map, but I kind of do it uh, by brute force. Uh, instead of uh, taking the color out of my uh, my painting, out of my photo. Okay, let's see. Now I think I want to do this water, and it's very very dark as well. Um, but we're going to uh, use. I told you I wasn't using liquid white, but uh, I think.
think I'm going to get a little bit of liquid white out on my plate here and uh, use it because it does such a good job helping me. Uh, I've got my liquid white in a, uh, a bowl here that I uh, can, uh, not a bowl but a jar, because it does, uh, it comes in large containers. All right, let's put that over here. So now I've got this liquid white and uh, I'm going to put it underneath where I want the uh, paint to go for the uh, water. So I'm just putting a little liquid white here. See how easy it smoothly it covers and how fast it is. It covers a lot of uh, canvas in no time. I have another rock over here on this side that I'm going to leave room for. Barely see that rock standing out there. Now we're getting some uglies, aren't we? All right, now. So the reason this liquid white is so good for this is because it makes a nice slick covering for the canvas. It allows you to put paint over it and pull it down and give this nice um, reflectivity to the water which is what tells the viewer this is water. It looks like snow right now. Um, we know it's not snow. Could be in a few months if it's, new, if it's in New Hampshire. This area could be covered in snow at some point. Um, probably is. All right let me get this knife cleaned up. All right, so what are we going to do with this water? Now, we're going to take the colors that are in the background <clears throat> or around the water. Water has no color, right? I've told you that before. Uh, it only reflects what's in it, what's around it, what's above it. So when you try to paint water, you have to uh, try to paint the colors that are either reflecting into it or are overhead. That's why you see a lot of water that's blue, but all water in paintings doesn't have to be blue. If you look at this photograph, you see that it's not. Um, so I'm going to pull down some uh, this brown color here into the water. Vertical strokes are telling the viewer that this is water. Um, I want some oranges in there and yellows. Hope you can see that okay. Oops. Um, so I'm using my orange color here and pulling down these colors. Mixing in some other color, a little bit of green in there for a little bit in some areas. This area over here has got probably more green in it, yellow and green, Let's see here. 
Um, I want some more of that brown color in here. Getting more brown. It's not dark enough. Um, still very light. Let's see, we got more of these colors down here. Start looking uh, more violet, more like the rock that they're reflecting above them here. So we'll change the color here and start pulling down color there, more with this violet in it. See this liquid white, because it doesn't dry very quickly, lets you put this on and you can come back then and start putting in some horizontal brush strokes that uh, actually make it uh, very smooth and make it look very much like water. Since this is a calm standing water right now, that's why it makes me think a little bit this might be a, a tidal area where the uh, tide has gone out and left this water nice and smooth and soft. And So we're getting a lot of reflections here. As we come over this way, over toward me, we're getting a lot more darker colors in here. I'm gonna to have to come back and restate that rock, at least restate the edges of that rock. Um, I'm just mixing all these colors in the brush without uh, much regard to what's in the brush. Uh, but um, these vertical strokes is what tell you what's going on with this water. I'm going to put a little more uh, Okay, that definitely looks like water, right? Got some really good reflections in here. Um, I'm gonna pull back some more, or bring in some more darks in here to help highlight some of this area even more. Um, under these rocks. Okay, that dark makes the light really sparkle. Okay. Don't have a lot more to do once we get this water in. We've got one more rock to put in and then maybe a little fine tuning of the some of the rest of it here, but uh, we're getting very close, folks. We've been going an hour and not quite an hour and a half. Normally my two hour time frame is sort of my target. Uh, let's see here. This area over here is really dark. Put this in and then pull it down. You can pull it down or pull it up, either way. I think I want some more gray. Some areas. 
I haven't cleaned this brush hardly at all. I've wiped it out maybe once, but basically it's uh, just a mixture of all these colors. And uh, I can't really see what's below that. Uh, I'm going to assume this is a, uh, or here is a dark color reflecting that rock that's above it, which I haven't put in yet, but I'm going to. Okay. Still not nearly as dark as the photograph, um, but um, or orange. I don't have my trees exactly reflecting in there yet either, do I? Like this tree over here, this one there. Um, this big one right here. Didn't make them dark enough. Like that, there's a little one here. When they reflect, the tree leans that way, the reflection goes that way. So you want to make this thing go slightly like that, right? It makes it look more like the mirror would reflect it. Can't quite see it, can you? Let's see, I got the darker on this side. Let's put it like that. Okay, so you see what I'm saying about the reflections? When your tree goes that way, your reflection in the water goes the opposite way. If you were to draw an angle, it would be the same angle going the opposite way. Got some trees going down here, maybe some more reflections. Um, since we got a lot of trees up in there, we can put these, a lot more of these vertical reflections going on. Um, got a few darks in there and here. I did that one already. Something like that. All right. Um, bottom of this rock here. Got to come in and put some more dark stuff in there. It's not really standing out that much. There we go. See that sharp edge? This really, really sharp edge where I just pushed the brush down. That makes it delineates it from the water behind it and it starts telling you that's another object that is here. I'm going to show that that's rounded so I'm sort of feathering the brush out as I come out. Uh, it has a little angled area here as well so I'm going to try to make that stand out. And uh, what else can I do with that thing? I can still put a few more things under it like this. Um, okay, um, this other rock on the other side, I might as well go get him and do it right now as well. Um, he's got a little bit of brown in him and some dark colors. Let's see here. Brown and purple. So make it like that, sharp edge. Okay. Um, I've got to smooth this, uh, oops, that's wrong, wrong value. Pick up a lighter color here. I still want to try to make a sharp edge out of this if I can. There's a sharp edge. All right, then pull it back in, blend it, don't leave it hard edge on all of the whole thing. Put in some other cracks and crevices and things like that. Make it look like we've got some, it's got something going on here. It's not just a 
one big blob divide it up a little bit into sections and that sort of stuff okay a little more dark in here I think that's pretty decent a little bit of highlight on this guy over here maybe top um, that oh I got the wrong color blue in there don't want that in this brush put just a little bit of that phthalo blue in and boy it just takes over you just have to really work with it to make sure it's not overtaking your painting um, I've got areas here that I want to sort of do a little bit of work on these areas here have need to be lightened up a little bit I think um, put some more highlights on Just to bring them out a little bit, they're sort of too nondescript back there, and they are fairly close, so you want to give them some definition back there. I'm just using some titanium white and whatever gray color I can get on this brush. Something like that, maybe a little bit of color like this. Um, there is a dark set a brush under here that sort of connect up into that other brush some really dark darks in here something like that okay um, the thing that makes it nice for uh, to make this look more like water is the fact, I mean it looks pretty much like s smooth water right now without doing anything, but um, you can use this landscape brush with this nice soft thousand bristles in there and you can just start here and make a let's start over here make a soft sweep to the right sweep this way all of a sudden I gave it a much softer appearance wipe that brush out and uh, so it doesn't look quite as hard or quite as uh, um, rough edge I guess is what I want to say um, all right I'm going to look for just a few more things to do a little calligraphy I've got some I want to touch in some more of this uh, put some more paint on the canvas I'm going to get my greens and uh, cad yellows I'm going to come back in here and start putting in some little heavier uh, leaves and that sort of thing to sort of show you that there's more than just uh, I really want to I want to bring it forward if I can actually put paint on there that stands out it helps bring that object whatever it is tree or rock or whatever if you put more he heavier paint on it it does come forward I don't know how well you can see that um, but um, that's what I'm trying to do there's a lot of brush and stuff in here that's um, kind of hanging over these uh, rocks and so forth so I'm just gonna dab in some really light highlights um, in some of these areas and just sort of drag it back up the bank um, helps tell you that this is uh, what this is overpaint these rocks a little bit here with it um, over there I've pretty well finished that over there I don't think I want to put too much I do want to bring this yellow color this color over in this area slightly why am I doing that you ask it's about trying to balance the painting out trying to add you don't want to have colors over here that you don't have over here or vice versa you want to sort of mix them up a little bit and as I'm saying that I'm seeing that I have quite a bit of this uh, violet gray color over here on the right and I don't have much of it on the left 
So, pull out my little brush, get my violet, and I'm going to put in some dark accents. That's hopefully this color in here somewhere, in some places, um, around these trees maybe, in some of these areas. We'll show some uh, areas where we've got some maybe denser um, shadows back here. I didn't put in any shadows back here to speak of. So, I mean, I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of overkilling this thing a little bit, but basically I wanted you to see the, when you're talking about balancing a painting, um, you want to try to have a repetition of the colors uh, on both sides of the painting. You don't want to have it all overloaded <clears throat> with one color over there or whatever, even though the photograph was really highly overloaded with uh, the, the purples and the grays and that sort of stuff on the left, on the right side, and all the oranges and all of that on the left side. Um, and while I'm speaking about that, uh, I'm going to dry out my brush and I'm going to go back and do something similar on the right side because I don't really have any oranges or yellows sitting over here. So let's put a few little dabs of color, uh, not much. Um, pick out some yellow, pick out some uh, orange, and just sort of lay in a few little things where the trees are turning, maybe all the leaves haven't fallen off yet, um, but just enough to say, I know I'm not balancing this out properly if I don't put these colors over here. A couple of bushes down here that uh, may be orange, They're starting to change already. All right, um, I'm gonna put a little more orange down here. I got this, I wanna balance it vertically and horizontally. And uh, pretty much what I wanna do there. Um, let's see, maybe some of these uh, cracks and crevices in this rock can be highlighted. Um, there's a lot of not sure the best way. I don't know if the rigor is the best thing to do that with. I'm going to dry some dry brush. Uh, I'm doing wet on wet, so trying to do dry brush over it is a little bit of a challenge, but see if I can do a little pulling down like this. Um, give me a little bit of texture in here, something that sort of makes it look a little rougher than just smooth rock because it's not really a smooth rock it's really a rough rough rock uh, leave a few brush strokes in there and uh, same thing over here let's put a few uh, scrapes and I did some highlights already but see there's that dry brush te technique you take it and pull it real fast you get a uh, it, it skips over the canvas and it uh, gives you that nice little um, hit and miss uh, over the canvas. Add this, move this back a little bit, connect it down here a little better. We do have um, the other thing I could do, I'm about finished here folks, I want to just check it one more time for a little bit of balance. Um, the thing that we also see in this painting, and it's a dry brush technique, last thing I'm going to do is make this, some of these sparkles on the water. You can do this with oil paint, you can do it with uh, acrylics and maybe pastels. It's really hard to do in watercolor. I don't know if I can even do it. I'm going to try to dry some of this off and just see if I can pull across very fast like this I got running into my there that's that's the kind of thing I'm trying to get I don't know if you can see that that well but um, making just a few strokes fast barely touch the canvas something like that helps show there's uh, some ripples in the water. I'm just using uh, titanium white. There we go, something like this. I 
All right, I think. I closed up some of this. There's clear canvas in here. I want that white to just so stand out so much. All right. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. I need somebody to tell me to stop. If you're getting tired and bored, tell me to stop. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sign this thing and uh, Whoops, I see one rock that I didn't really quite finish off here. This little guy sitting right here is sort of a... kind of sticks out there in the water. Has a dark base on him, if I can get it dark. And a dark shadow on the back side here. Come on, dark shadow. Darker. Keep me painting here. All right. Um, I think I'll let it go with that and uh, pick up a little bit of my uh, thinner here and get my uh, get a color on my brush that I can block print my name and uh, something that's a little bit darker than what's on the uh, on here. I'm just gonna put it right in here. folks. What else can I do here? It's still not quite dark enough. All right. It's, uh... Okay, there we go. Um, I think that's... Uh, all I want to do, I may do a little touch up, I may do a few things in there, but basically uh, I think I've got the rocks in there the way I want them. This little area looks kind of there, that's a little better. I left that, uh, you can see the side of the brush there, I didn't like that. So that's good. Always use your finger for a brush if you run out of brushes. All right, um, I think that's it for today. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm glad to have so many folks here from around the world. and. Uh, Look for my uh, watercolor painting next Wednesday at uh, 1 o'clock, same time, if you want to follow watercolors. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, there's a uh, little uh, bell-looking icon next to the word subscribe, to the button that says subscribe. And if, you, if you're subscribed and you hit that button, it will unsubscribe you. If you hit that, and if you are subscribed and you want to be notified of my videos when they come out, press that little button and it will send and YouTube will send you an email uh, when I've uploaded a new video. It's a way of getting notified. So most people, I don't know if they know it, it it's at least it's simple, simpler than it used to be, um, but it's still uh, not obvious uh, how to get uh, notified when somebody's uh, putting up a new video. So uh, try that. Uh, tell your friends and uh, look, check my uh, website out on Facebook and uh, and the, like I said, the uh, sketch for this will be out on my website uh, when I re-edit this video. In two or three days, I'll have a new version up. Um, and uh, in the meantime, you can continue to watch this or back up and watch it. And uh, so uh, tell your friends if you like my painting and have them uh, check out my website, check out my YouTube videos, and subscribe. And uh, there's, uh, the links will be down below uh, for, the, uh, for my website to the I think I'll put the value map out there and I put the uh, sketch out there nowadays. So uh, check that out until I see you again. This is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye.